yeah, if you guys are just tuning into this video and you've seen the title of what this video is about, then yeah, this review is way overdue. Gabriel Reyes here and I'm back with another review of movies and television and like I just said earlier this review is going to be about the live action Disney Channel original movie Kim Possible. Yes I had mentioned so many times that I was going to do a review of the Kim Possible live action movie but I never really got the chance to do it because you know you know just life in particular and you know, the Kim Possible movie just drifted away. But then I went back, watched it again on demand, wrote down some notes on everything that I wanted to, you know, give my review on about the movie as a whole. So as usual, I'll give a brief explanation of the plot and my thoughts on the movie overall, as well as the actors who played, you know, who played all of these characters in live action. So, of course, spoiler alert. So the whole start of this movie is that Kim and Ron are actually off to save a, to save a to save a doctor who has created this this black goo that ends up turning into into pink sparkling goo instead. And of course, the bad guy who captured the 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 doctor is an old familiar villain, Professor Dementor, and. Of course, if you guys remember Professor Dementor, and like an, an over-exaggerated German accent, and yeah, it's, it's really interesting to see this character brought into live action, especially when they're, when that character is played by the same actor that did the voice of him. So overall, Kim and Ron save the Doctor, they defeat Professor Dementor, and, he, and they get him sent off to jail, and of course with the help of Wade, their tech tech friend and expert. As usual, Kim and Ron save the day. Moving forward, it's Ron and Kim's first day of high school and introduce but you know we're introduced to Kim and her family and so glad that they included, you know, the mother, father, and her twin brothers. So it's always cool that they want to put in everything that was Kim possible that it is. So as you so moving on. So again moving on. First day of high school for Kim and Ron. You know, they're trying to enjoy their first day, but it kind of got off a little hand since Kim had everything prepared to be ready for the first day of high school. But of course, things kind of, you know, shifted all around. So along the first day of high school, Kim and Ron end up meeting a new student named Athena, and she becomes an instant friend to Kim and Ron because apparently she is a big fan of Kim. And of course, they take her to Bueno Nacho and they introduce her to a lot of great things that both Kim and Ron have done and you know she is included in their in their little circle of friends that they are now you know along with Wade and of course they all become good friends and of course along the way you know they even Kim tries to help Athena a lot more to improve everything in high school as well as her social life kind of like the same way that Kim was having during the first day of high school. And while this is all happening, we see Dr. Draken in prison, you know, trying to come up with another scheme and trying to find a way of how to destroy Kim Possible. And along the way, Shigo ends up dropping in on the prison and breaks him out of his prison cell. And first things first, I gotta say, Shigo in this movie, whew, like, oh man, like, dude, Shigo is a hottie. Of course, I think Shiko has always been a hottie, but not to see her in a live action movie and seeing somebody, you know, play as Shiko, whew, now that's a hottie. But moving along, Kim ends up helping Athena a lot more of, such as getting her a haircut, getting her new clothes, and, you know, introducing her more into, into her life as, as a hero. While this is all happening, Dr. Draken and Shiko end up getting a power generator that up selling in order to really put in the plot of how Dr. Dragon is going to defeat Kim once and for all. And with that happening, Kim and Ron decide to bring Athena along with them on the mission to stop Dr. Dragon and Shigo. So they get to the lab and 
they unfortunately they actually I think they ended up in there first and actually in this lab of science of science we actually end up seeing Rufus oh yeah Ron actually ended up getting Rufus in the science in the science lab that they were that they were going to stop Dr. Dragon and Shigo at so we are introduced to Rufus and I gotta say he looks pretty good as a little CGI animal and up uh, and of course, they were act they were definitely gonna go with something like that for Rufus being CGI. So of course, Doctor Dragon and Shigo are, Shigo are there. Kim and Ron try to stop them, you know, as always. But of course, Kim ends up, you know, she ends up getting messed up, and it's actually the first time that, that she actually feels like she was trapped and scared and everything, because her and Ron ended up getting trapped in that yellow tank, and uh, it was actually starting to get scary. But then Athena steps in tries to take out Shigo and wow I gotta say Athena just picked up on picked up like that and, and the fight and everything so as usual the next day a video of Athena stopping Shigo ends up going around the whole high school and everybody sees and everybody is praising Athena for everything that she's done and it's kind of like it's like a whole 180 against Kim because Kim is usually the one that always saves the day and now she's pretty now she's just feeling all down and depressed about it now. Now we get to the point in which Kim has definitely got, she has definitely broken down to this point in her life. Well, just her teenage life saying that, you know, she doesn't feel like she can do this anymore. But then she ends up going to see her grandmother. And, well, I gotta say her grandmother, even she's like a, she's, dude, she is a badass. She has her own little dojo. And her and Kim just, you know, they practice with her, with both staffs and, wow, well, I gotta say, I gotta say, she gave some pretty good advice to Kim to, you know, just be who you are and always give it your all. You do what you can. Now we're at this point where Dr. Dragon's his evil scheme is that he wants to steal the spark that is within Kim Possible, the spark that makes her great, and pretty much that's what Dr. Dragon wants. The next day it is at, we are at Middleton High School. Everybody's in the in the cafeteria, you know, getting ready for an assembly for Athena, and she's gonna get an award for all the heroics that she's done. Then all of a sudden, Doctor Dragon and Shigo come in, they kidnap her. Kim tries to stop her, but she ends up failing. So now Kim is thinking that right now to put it all in, to put it all on the line, her, her grandmother, her mother, and of course Ron and Rufus gonna go and save Athena. We get to Dr. Dragon's secret base, in which, you know, of course, you know, Wade ends up finding it, and, you know, half the time, you know, they always end up finding Dr. Dragon's secret base in any kind of way. They get there, they break in, try to find Athena, see if she's being held hostage, but actually she isn't. She's like in a little, she's in her room, like she's got a bedroom, and it's filled with a lot of Kim Possible memorabilia like she like there are like pictures of her and like you know how like you see in like those tv shows of a of a smart science guy who's like connecting a lot of dots everywhere and everything yeah it's kind of like that and we end up finding out that athena is actually a robot she was created by dr dragon and Sh and she go you know to infiltrate middleton high school befriend kim and find out what makes kim you know kim the spark that's in her and to really you know show up Kim you know to to downgrade her to make her feel that you know she can't be the hero anymore and it kind of got me wondering this sounds very familiar it seems like this happened in another Kim Possible movie I wonder what that kind of plot line happened anyway she go captures Kim Try to, they put her up onto the machine to transfer her confidence and her spark into Dr. Dragon. So Kim's mom, grandmother, Ron and Rufus come crashing in. They try to rescue Kim, but then they get trapped in, trapped in a laser prison and they're trying to find a way to get out of it. And the most hilarious thing is that Dr. Dragon ends up telling them, shouting out that there is an off machine, that there's a turn off machine for the lasers. And she go just ends up going, ends up just yelling at Dr. Dragon saying like to not point where it is you idiot and 
this, it, and that's just a classic duo of Shigo and Dr. Dragon of arguing. So Rufus ends up getting onto the drone and rides towards the turnoff machine. So that way he turns it off, lasers have been turned down, heroes are freed, and of course they try to stop Dr. Dragon and Shigo. Kim ends up disrupting the machine. And the most hilarious thing to happen is that Dr. Dragon ends up reversing and ages down to a kid. So Shigo and Kid Dr. Dragon go to the escape pod and the machine and the machine is about to blow up. Athena stays behind to block the explosion and she tells the Kim, Ron, and the rest of the group to get out of there so they could escape and live. Big explosion. Athena is blown up into a bunch of parts and Kim ends up finding Athena's head and they reassure her that, you know, they can put her back together. So the next day is that Kim brought Athena's body, her body parts to, to the possible house and of course her dad and her twin brothers are gonna start a little project of putting Athena back together. They end up doing it. She is a hero now with Kim and Ron. They end up starting a karate club at the school. Everything has been brought up, turned around, and everything is tip top shape in the good old days of Kim Possible. The most funny part at the end of the movie is that Dr. Dragon is going to now infiltrate Middleton High School, you know, as a kid now, saying that his backstory was that he advanced in school studies. And of course, we see him and Shigo pull up to the high school and you just see Shigo just wearing like, I think it was a, like a power suit. And it's, it's just hilarious just seeing Shigo and Dr. Dragon as a kid, you know, argue. And then tells him to just go off to school and of course you know his evil scheme infiltrating high school and seeing you know Kim and making sure that he gets the next move on how to defeat her. So that was my explanation of the plot of the movie. Did the best I could of what I wrote down and tried to explain it as good as I can. So my overall thoughts on the movie you know it was not bad. You know, considering that this is a live action adaption from from Disney Channel's own cartoons, it's not really surprise it's not really surprising that Disney would adapt, you know, something that's animated into live action. I mean, that's always that's been a trend for decades now. But to see Kim Possible in live action, it was actually pretty cool. It was a it was a good decent movie, you know, for Disney Channel. And of course, you know, the way that, you know, they did the special effects and fighting court choreography and all that and everything you know it's the typical thing for a Disney for a Disney Channel movie and you know there was a there was a lot of negative there was a lot of negative talk about this movie when it was first announced to me it really didn't matter as long as as long as the movie was fun and enjoyable you know that's all that counts because I know that there are a lot of diehard Kim Possible fans who either like the movie or they didn't like the movie but you have to admit that Disney Channel, they did what they did, they did what they could, and they made it fun. I love the fact that Sadie Stanley, who played Kim Possible, was great. Seriously, she was a great Kim. And I love the fact that at the time when they had started this movie, she was actually the right age of Kim. She was actually, I think she was 15. She was at either, yeah, I think she was 15. She was 15 when she got casted as Kim, so she was the right age to play Kim. Okay, moving on to the rest of the cast. Sean Gambrone as Ron, as Ron Stoppable. He was really hilarious. I really liked the way that he portrayed Ron. And of course, if you guys know who Sean is, he's a well, he's the lead actor in The Goldbergs. Hilarious kid, hilarious actor, and he really brought Ron to life. Sierra Wilson, who played Athena, really good. You know, she, you know, she did pretty good as Athena, playing, uh, playing a free-spirited kid, and then turned a 180, being a villain to Kim, but then ended up redeeming herself as a character. So Sierra played that role well. A really big surprise in the casting was Allison Hunnigan, who played. Dr. Anne Possible, Kim's mom. 
it was, I was really surprised to see her cast in this movie because we all know her from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the American Pie movies, How I Met Your Mother, and just to see her in this in this movie, it was really surprising to me. And she did awesome as Kim's mom. Todd Stashwick as Dr. Dragon played it really well. He really he really played Dr. Dragon as that comedic villain, but. You know, he he just you know, he he brought out Dr. Dragon. He he looked really cool. I like the fact that in order to show the blueness in him, you know, there was a little you know, I like that they dyed a little bit of that there was a little bit of blueness here and that the veins on his butt on his face and his arms all in blue. So I liked how they did that for him. And especially his costume, you know, the the blue leather trench coat. I gotta say that was that's like an seriously like that coat was awesome. Now for Shigo, Taylor Ortega, who played Shigo. Oh wow! I gotta say, she really brought out that cockiness that that we all know when Shigo is known for. She brought out her meanness, her badassness, and just everything that is Shigo. And I gotta say that her cost her costume as Shigo was really cool. And you know the fact that. The fact that, you know, the way that Shigo has her powers, but it looks like in this movie, her powers are just coming from her gauntlets. And, you know, that's a big change to, to Shigo of how she has, you know, green plasma powers. And I, and I actually kind of like that. Now for the special guests who made their appearances in this movie, one of them was Patton Oswalt, who played Professor Dementor. And... You know, it was really cool seeing him in this movie because, again, he's playing the same character that he voiced in the animated series, and it was just really interesting to see him play this character again. I like the fact that he just wears a regular, you know, regular army German helmet and not the helmet that his animated version wears that just covers, like, part of his, part of his eyes and just shows just his mouth. It's interesting how, you know, they chose to do that in the live action instead of the way that it looks in the animated version. Another actor who reprised their character in this movie from the original series was Nancy Cartwright, who did the voice of Rufus. Now, for Nancy doing the voice of Rufus, she, I gotta say, she didn't really... Rufus didn't really talk as much. Uh, well, he did talk, but he just made more squeak. He made more squeaky noises than, you know, words. Because if you remember in the animated series, he actually did talk, you know, every now and then. But in that, in the live action version, he, Rufus just squeaked. I guess they were trying to, you know, keep in mind that Rufus is, you know, he is an animal. And, you know, he does, animals tend to not talk. But then again, it's Rufus. They, so, I, so the way that I heard Rufus, you know, you definitely tell that Nancy was, was trying to form words, you know, as Rufus, but again, being a live action animal, especially when the animal is CGI, you try to put in a little bit of words, but she put in more squeaks. But, you know, overall, I like that, that she came back as Rufus. And the original Kim Possible herself, Christy Carlson Romano. Now, her special guest appearance in this movie was kept under wraps because she didn't, I guess, she didn't want to say that of what her role was going to be in this movie, but it was well kept under. So apparently she she plays a pop, a famous pop star in this movie who is Kim and Athena's favorite, you know, singer. And for her to make an appearance in this movie, it was, I think that was, that was just something to please the fans because, you know, Christy Carlson is the OG Kim. She will always be the OG Kim. So overall, the movie is fun. It's enjoyable. You should give it a chance and just keep an open mind that this was a decom movie and that they put in a lot of production into this. So I applaud. So I applaud the director, writers, producers, every, everybody on the crew, as well as that, as well as the actors themselves for bringing the Kim Possible characters to life. Okay, you guys. So that was my review of the live-action Kim Possible movie. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and hit the little notification bell as well. I'm Gabriel Reyes. I'm out. I'll see you next time.